Hey, what's up, guys? Today, I'll show you a horror thriller film, Quarantine, Part 1. Spoiler ahead, watch out and take care. The movie begins with a reporter named Angela and her cameraman entering a local fire station. Angela hosts a show that specializes in nighttime jobs. For this episode, she is featuring the daily lives of firemen. Angela meets with the chief of the fire department, who tells her that contrary to popular belief, most firemen actually respond to medical situations. He then introduces her to Jake and George, who she will be following around for the episode. Jake and George are both good-looking young men who immediately start flirting with Angela. They tour Angela and her cameraman around the station and show her their recreational facilities, shower area, and dorms. Jake also adds that the firemen do 48-hour shifts, so there's a big chance that Angela will get to witness firsthand how they respond to calls. George challenges Angela to a game of who can put on the firemen's overalls the fastest. Angela enthusiastically participates. However, their merriment is cut short when an alarm blares. This means that Jake and George are being called to respond to an emergency call. In a matter of minutes, they are all seated inside the truck and heading toward the address. They arrive at an apartment building. Two policemen are waiting for them. They explain that concerned neighbors called the police because the elderly woman living alone in one apartment was screaming so loud. Several curious neighbors are gathered on the ground floor. The policemen lead the way, and they break down the door to the apartment. Inside, they find the panicked old woman with blood all over her face. They try to calm her down, but she attacks and bites one of the policemen. Jake immediately carries the wounded policeman downstairs, and they leave George behind to take care of the old woman. However, when they get back to the ground floor, they discover that the building has been barricaded from the outside world. A mother cradling her daughter informs them that her husband is outside and is barred from getting in. Unfortunately, he needs to get inside immediately because he has the medicine their daughter needs. Another neighbor, who is a vet, steps forward and applies first aid to the wounded policeman. Moments later, a body drops from the upper floor to the ground floor. It is revealed to be George. Jake goes to him and realizes that he still has a pulse. However, since they are locked inside, they can't get help for George. The remaining policeman named Danny goes with Angela and her cameraman back upstairs. They see the old woman roaming the hallways with her teeth bared. They warn her many times to stop, but she keeps coming toward them to attack. Finally, Danny pulls out his gun and shoots her. The group proceeds to knock on more doors around the building to gather the tenants. In one of the rooms, they find another woman who is visibly sick. They take her downstairs. Before they leave, Jake notices that there's a rat in the room who almost attacks him. Angela hears Jake talking, and she demands that he tell her the truth about what's happening. He discloses that the building is under quarantine because of a potential biological threat. This causes panic among the tenants. A man speaks up and says that all their phones, TVs, and radios are no longer working. One of the residents tells Jake that he knows of another way out through a window on the second floor. However, when they go there, an armed soldier is waiting and points his gun at them. Angela shouts through the window that they are filming everything and that the people will see how the military is treating them. The soldier doesn't say anything, but instead starts sealing all the windows with plastic sheets. Danny arrives and orders the group to go back downstairs. Angela complies, but she continues shooting footage and making sure that they document everything that's going on. The vet treats the two wounded men. However, he comments that their condition is growing dire. Moreover, he finds it hard to believe that a frail old woman could attack the two women like them. Angela next interviews the sick daughter, who is being brave despite everything that's going on. The daughter shares that her father is out with their dog because the dog is sick and needs a doctor. The mother tells Angela that the daughter has been sick for the past few weeks too. Then Angela also talks to an opera teacher who lives with his best student. Suddenly, George rises from his makeshift bed. He is now acting delirious and walking despite breaking so many bones in his fall. Foam is bubbling out of his mouth. They get him back inside the room to rest. The vet realizes that George and the sick woman are both displaying signs of rabies. However, it's strange because rabies only manifests symptoms after several months. For George and the sick woman, it's only been a matter of hours. The vet warns the rest of the group that if they get bitten by an infected person, or if the infected person's blood or saliva gets in their wound, they can be infected too. Angela asks if they can just take rabies shots to cure the infected, but the vet answers that once symptoms show, it's too late to cure rabies already. A male lawyer changes his mind and decides that he will stay in his apartment instead and barricade his door because of the potential infection. Angela and the others try to get him to stay, but he gets inside the elevator anyway. Suddenly, a huge rabid dog pounces on him as the elevator doors close. The others could not do anything to help the lawyer as the dog mauls him to death. 
the sick woman suddenly appears and attacks Angela and her cameraman. He is forced to kill the sick woman to stop her from biting them. Her blood spurts all over the camera lens and Angela's shirt. The cameraman immediately feels remorse about what he had to do, but Angela comforts him and tells him that it wasn't his fault. Downstairs, Danny informs everyone that CDC officers will be coming inside to test everyone. When they're all cleared, they will be allowed to get out of the building. The vet interjects and says that there is no test for rabies unless they take a brain sample by drilling into a person's skull. However, Danny believes that the vet is incorrect and it's not rabies that's going around. After this, he initiates a roll call so they can all know who's missing and who's dead. The landlord says that the tenant in the attic is missing and that he hasn't seen him for months now. A CDC officer arrives and drills into George's head. This confirms what the vet said about rabies being tested by extracting brain samples. However, after this, George rises again. The CDC officer leaves the room and locks the door behind him, trapping the vet inside the room. The vet shouts and bangs at the door, insisting that he wasn't bitten. Jake and the others try to get him out, but the CDC officer is adamant that he not leave. Moments later, the vet is attacked by George. The officer reveals to the rest of the group that they were alerted to the possible contagion because of the daughter's sick dog. When the husband brought the dog to a clinic, it started attacking other pets inside. They used the details on the dog's collar to trace the origin of the infection to the apartment building, which led the CDC to quarantine them. The other residents turn on the mother and the daughter for concealing this, especially since the daughter can be potentially infected. The mother argues that her daughter just has bronchitis and is not infected. She holds her daughter close to her, and the daughter suddenly bites her. Despite the attack, the mother releases the daughter and shouts at her to run because the CDC will capture her. The officer orders Danny and Jake to get the daughter so she can be further studied. They run upstairs with Angela and the cameraman. Danny finds the daughter hiding in a closet. He approaches the child to make her feel at ease, but he realizes too late that her eyes have turned crimson red and she really is infected. The daughter leaps and bites Danny. Jake steps in and kills the daughter with an axe. Downstairs, all hell breaks loose as the infected residents all converge on the remaining survivors. The group lock themselves inside a room. However, they discover that the officer and the student have both been bitten. The opera teacher tries to escape out a window, but is gunned down by a soldier standing sentry in front of the building. Angela realizes that the soldiers outside will never let them leave the building alive unless they find another way out. The survivors try to go downstairs, and they see that the mother and two other residents are already infected. The student appears out of nowhere and attacks Angela, but Jake and the cameraman help to get the student off of her. Jake finally twists the student's neck, and she dies. Angela cries and breaks down due to the trauma of what's been happening. She is freaking out since she thought she was bitten. The cameraman consoles her and assures her that she wasn't bitten. The landlord tells Jake that there is another way out through the basement, but the officer, who is now infected, attacks and kills him. The landlord's wife refuses to leave him behind, so she dies too. They rush to the mailboxes in the lobby to find the basement keys, all the while dodging the various infected people. However, the landlord, now also infected, appears and attacks Jake. Jake is now infected, so Angela and the cameraman have no choice but to leave his shitty life behind. The two remaining survivors are forced to go up to the attic to escape the rabid infection. Inside the attic apartment are various lab equipment and newspaper clippings. They quickly deduce that the tenant who lived there was the origin of the virus, which has been wreaking havoc in the building. The tenant was a part of a doomsday cult that broke into a secure military facility and stole a virus that was engineered to be a more advanced form of rabies. The landlord had earlier mentioned that he hadn't seen that tent for months, so it's probable that the tenant was the first infected, and then the virus had spread through the rats, and then to the pets until it infected the daughter. The power turns off, and Angela grapples in the dark because she can't see anything. The cameraman switches on the night vision and tries to guide Angela to him. A trapdoor opens, and an infected slinks in and swats at his camera, causing it to fall. This infected person looks so emaciated and deformed, implying that this is the tenant who's been languishing for months already. The infected person attacks the cameraman. Angela retrieves the fallen camera and sees through the lens that the infected person has killed the cameraman and is feasting on his flesh. Angela drops the camera and she falls down on the floor. The camera is still filming and the movie ends with Angela being dragged into the darkness. This is Daniel CC Movie Channel. Stay safe and enjoy your day.